Have you ever felt like Jeff? This goes... here. Hey there. I think it's starting to get this. I don't get it. Why can't I see anything? Hmm. I think that one might be the North Star. Well, if you have, you've came to the right place. Astrophotography can be an intimidating hobby. There is a massive learning curve with so many things to understand. You have guiding, flight solving, polar aligning, stacking, and much, much more. What if there was one product that had it all with one easy to use application? Well, now there is. So, say bye bye, Mr. Computer, and hello to the new ASI Air Plus with two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy there, narrator. Let's say some of the juicy details for the review. Oh, uh, sorry. Thank you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, we like to share what's up in space and how to image amazing targets. Consider subscribing if you're interested in how to image astrophotography photos or just space in general. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the new ZWO ASIR Plus. We're going to be looking into the new design, top features, ASIR app, and what it can do for you. My name's Scott. And you're watching Cosmic Sand Castles. So, if you're new to this hobby, you're probably wondering what is the ASI Air. Well, the ASI Air, in a nutshell, eliminates the need for a computer. You could sync up to this with any iPhone or Android device. This is a real game changer for this hobby. It makes imaging fun without having to go outside and take a look at your computer to see if everything's running smoothly. So now that you know the basics of what the ASI Air is, let's jump right into it. The ASI Air Plus is a third edition to the ASIR series. Back in July of 2018, the first generation of ASIR was released. This was basically a Raspberry Pi with the ZWO logo printed on the plastic shell. One year later, the Pro was released. This was a major improvement, but it had one flaw. And that was the Wi-Fi would drop dramatically. Dramatically? Is that even a word? I don't know, it just sounds so right. Anyways, the Wi-Fi would pretty much be crappy and would drop around 15 feet. You could also extend the Wi-Fi with an extender through the Ethernet port, but this just confused things and it didn't work 100% of the time and basically defeated the purpose of the ASI Air. This year, the third generation was released and they solved this connection issue by equipping a Wi-Fi extender to the device. This majorly extends the Wi-Fi connectivity from roughly 15 feet to 65 feet. Also, the Plus uses an SMA female connection so you can add a stronger antenna if needed. What I added here is a 9 dBi antenna that boosts my signal. The Plus is 24% thinner and 13% lighter than the Pro. Its dimensions are as displayed and is a tad bit longer than the Pro, but as an owner of both the Pro and the Plus, the slimmer, shorter design just feels better on your telescope. The connection ports are basically the same as the Pro and comes with a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, a DSLR shutter release, a four, 12 volt DC outputs. ZWO also has added LED display lights above the DC outputs to let you know that the port is active. A nice difference is that the reset button is now pressable, but I've never had to use this on either device. The Plus has eliminated a need for the micro SD card. 
but still supports one if you want to transfer files that way. It now has an internal storage of 84 gigabytes so you can capture images freely. Also, ZWO has added a USB Type-C port to transfer files from the ASI Air to a computer. I tested this out and didn't like the idea of having to remove my device from my telescope setup. Also, I had to power up the Plus in order to transfer the files. Definitely not a practical solution. So, I just stick with the USB stick. Some of the top features are as followed. Deep space image sequencing for single targets and multi-targets in plan mode. Live stacking with calibration frames. Planetary imaging with high speed video capture. Deep space sequencing that can handle both color cameras and mono filtering sequencing. Automatic focus with a focus motor or batten off mask assisted focus. Guiding with automatic guiding calibration, polar alignment functions, power management, dew heater control, DSLR shutter release capability, target lookup featuring multiple catalogs, Messier, IC, NGC, and Sharpless, whatever the heck that is. And last but not least, plate solving. This feature got me hooked onto astrophotography. What place solving essentially is, is that after you take a test shot of the night sky, the device then reads the stars and determines your location and talks to your mount to center your selected target. When I first started astrophotography back in 2020, I was intimidated from plate solving, guiding, and all these other things, stacking and the processing. It just was so confusing. The ASI Air made me super juiced to go out and image. I never look back. The planetary imaging feature is new and can use a bit of an update. Hopefully ZWO does this by next year as when the planets will be in opposition for my location. The only downside feature for all you people with non-ZWO cameras, focusers, filter wheels, and the ASI Air it currently doesn't support any of those products. Hopefully ZWO will change this in the future, but I get it from a business perspective and I'm happy with their products in general. When you first start up the ASR app and connect to its Wi-Fi, you'll see this screen. You'll want to enter your coordinates to the left but if you're using a device with location, it should have it automatically entered. To the right, you'll see a selection to choose the type of mount that you have. And if you're going to be controlling your mount through your guide camera, select On Camera ST4. Next, input your main and guide scope focal lengths. If you're going to be plate solving, I tend to leave the main focal length at zero because the plate solving will automatically fill this in based off the image. After, select your main camera, guide camera, and any other devices you have connected. For any dew heaters or flat panels, you will turn on in the ASI Air setting. Once you've entered all your details, you'll now come to this screen. We'll start with the items on the left. First, you have the histogram, so if you're into looking at your histogram, just click this button. If you have the ZWO focuser connected, you'll see an option here that pops up a window to let you adjust your focus and perform autofocus. Note that this will not be here if you do not have the focuser connected. Next, you have the guide option. This will open and close the guide window. Guiding is pretty much as simple as push here dummy as soon as you have your stars in focus. Also, in the guiding window, you can select the graph to change your guiding perimeters. Third, you have the plate solving feature. 
After you take a preview, you are able to place all. This will then determine your location in the sky and communicate coordinates to your mount. Fourth, we have the tool selection. The crosshair tool is awesome for centering objects. Moving on up, we have eight items. The first one with the Wi-Fi logo is the ASI Air settings. In here is where you can select what DC output controls. I have my first port selected for main camera, second port selected for focuser, third port for dew heater, and fourth port for light panel. An awesome feature is that when you select dew heater or light panel, you can adjust the percentage. Below, you'll find Wi-Fi settings. Select on this to find station mode. Station mode allows your ASI Air to connect to Wi-Fi. You are able to control the ASI Air from any device that is connected to the same Wi-Fi network. This feature allows me to walk all around my house and track my image session from my device. Moving on, you have the main camera settings. This is where you turn on your camera's fan, set the gain, and see your scope's focal length. The custom file name feature has really helped me organize my light files. Before, if I would transfer my files to a computer and delete them from my ASI Air, adding new lights would have the same file name and I would have to manually go change each name to not overwrite the previous file. I have selected all these parameters to help with the ease of file storaging. Next, you have your guide settings, where you can set your gain, calibration step, and dithering parameters. For calibration step, I have found using a lower number for lower focal lengths helps. I recommend dithering every one to two frames. This will help with walking noise. Fourth, you have your mount settings. This is where you can see your mount and view objects selection. When you select view objects, you will see a list of tonight's best. And an awesome part about this is that it will show a graph on when the target rises and sets and how high it gets in the sky. Fifth is the filter wheel settings. I am currently only shooting with a one shot color camera, so I have not explored this settings but I want to say that you're able to automatically set different exposures for each filter, something I look forward into exploring in the future. Next, we have the focuser settings where you can see the position info and other perimeters. Something I wish ZWO would add is to increase the position max number. I have set this to zero after maxing it out from 60,000 from switching to my Hyperstar. Moving on, you will see the storage settings. This is where you can see how much storage you have on your storage device you've selected. And also view your files in the images management section. Last, you have the about section. This is where you can view update log, send in feedback and reset firmware. Now that we've got that down, let's explore the four items to the right. If you click on preview, you will see a list pop up. This is where you can select any of the top features listed previously. Auto run is where you can set your shooting schedule by adding edit sequences with exposure length and durations. You can also create a new sequence to add your darks. Be sure to cap your telescope when you're taking your darks. To start auto run, click on the capturing circle. I have it set to do an autofocus after I click on this, but you can actually stop this or uncheck this in the previous menu. Okay, that pretty much wraps up this video. In this video, we went over the design, top features, and a walkthrough through the app. I hope you got something out of this video as they do take a long time to make, and uh, I'm just glad if one of you guys learned something. My name is Scott and as always, clear skies.